Good evening, Innovate Nation. We're here today to answer some questions regarding whole food colostrum. And to do that, we're going to be taking a look at Innovate, which is a 30-year family-owned production facility that has produced top-level colostrum and whole food products. And with us to do that is Dr. Anthony Kleinsmith. He's our CEO, our founder, and he's the formulator of the Innovate products. He's considered one of the world's leading experts on the subject of colostrum, and he holds dual degrees, PhD, in nutritional science. So welcome today, Dr. Kleinsmith. Thank you very much, uh, Rose, for having me. And I'd like to give a little credit uh, where credit is due. Um, knowing what I know about colostrum, it started way back when, literally years and years and years ago, uh, through two gentlemen. One was the, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Alfred Fox from Rutgers, uh, multiple PhD, and another gentleman that uh, literally put me on the Cornell farms, in the Cornell labs, and at the time, Dr. Donald Lyon uh, was the head of the, the veterinary diagnostics lab and the veterinary college of medicine. So I got to take my hat off to, to those two gentlemen because they, they literally said, forget about marketing, right? Science is, is kind of an exact thing. One plus one always equals two. If you're very good at what you do, it may equal three or four, but it never equals one and it never equals zero. And, and there's, a, there's a book out there called The Fundamentals of Dairy Chemistry. And this is kind of the Bible in the, in the dairy industry, right? Things don't change. Uh, the, the, the creator does not fiddle for it, right? Uh, with things. And it's, and it's been fascinating for me to watch for the past 30 years where people manipulate like crazy um, and, and call it colostrum or they'll, they'll manipulate or remove something and say, see, it's, it, this is the only things that you need, right? There are 700 different components and there's probably more than that uh, that are found within whole food colostrum. Um, and, it, and it's been fascinating for me because in, in my uh, former life, we had over 140 international editorials written about uh, the different components that are found within true colostrum being beneficial for, for multiple scenarios, right? Awesome. Um, and, and, it's, and it's interesting when you go online and, and you start looking at, you know, published studies uh, from PubMed and, and NIH, and then you go into Scholar, uh, Google, scholar.google.com, and, and the list just go, it just explodes, right? There's so much out there. Awesome. Well, tonight, we're actually going to be looking at these. We're going mm -hmm. to be discussing our whole purpose in meeting is to be discussing the characteristics of true colostrum. What does it look like? We're going to be looking at the myth of fatted, fat-free colostrum, and then colostrum versus transitional milk. We're going to look at the value of dairy product testing through top rated labs. So um, let's jump in with the over 172,000 plus studies that you were just mentioning that are on PubMed and Google Scholar. Um, a, a number of new products are coming up on the market today. And given the multifaceted aspects of colostrum, what it does within our bodies, it's really key for us to know what happens what's going on with a whole food versus an adulterated, non defatted product. Because in this case scenario, I've learned from you that what we don't know can hurt us, can be not beneficial for us. So to just jump straight in, let's look at the appearance of 100% whole food, this unadulterated, not defatted, not standardized colostrum. So that powder is going to be creamy and yellow. It's going to clump. It's going to mold into your spoon easily. But then there are other products. I bought some on the market just to play with, um, not to put in my body, but to play with that are grainy and snow white. So can you address for us, what is going on in those two pictures? Well, 
when you when you look at, and we may get more into this, uh, especially with some of the research that's been done. Uh, but when you look at whole food colostrum, you know, uh, you can't outcreate the creator, right? Period. Um, colostrum is made up of six components, and within the components, you have you know, 700 plus constituents, growth factors, immune factors, cytokines, leukocytes, macrophage, the list goes on and on, right? It's when people get into, I'm a marketer and I want to differentiate mine from yours, right? I, I've, I've been in the colostrum industry for a lot of years and I've watched people come and go where you know, oh, we only have 200 or we have 400 or we've removed all the fat or we've added uh, uh, man-made lipids back in and we, you don't need the, the fat. And, you know, it, it's fascinating when you look at uh, what those six components, you know, fat, casein, albumin, protein, and ash and lactose. Uh, and then you start looking at all the individual growth factors, immune factors, and all the things that are found there. Well, there's a lot of research out there. Here, here's an example of what I mean by that. Um, this is from the American Analytical Chemistry Laboratories, where this is uh, this is an individual uh, component of colostrum. It's called proline-rich polypeptides, right? And I had a, a group that approached me some years ago, and they said, "Listen, you are an anomaly." I said, "Well, we'll kind of have to define that a little bit." They said, "Well, we're we're testing different colostrums." Uh, for their proline rich polypeptide values. I said, okay. They said, you're, you're astronomically higher. I said, okay, I'd be, I'd be interested in participating in this, right? And uh, so they sent in uh, multiple samples. I sent in six samples. Uh, and what was fascinating is this. If you remove the fat as these validations prove, your proline-rich polypeptide out of one gram is 0.753, okay? Very, very low. Now, they didn't remove all of the fat. There was 5% left in that. So there are some folks out there remove everything, right? They remove all of the fat, which is going to have an impact on, do you have even proline-rich polypeptides in there, right? Whereas with, with our proline-rich polypeptides, this was the lowest test that we got, which was 24.9%. Per gram, big difference. What that what that shows you is just on this one piece, the fat makes an incredible difference. And I, and I always like it when people go, "Oh, well, you don't need the fat; it's bad fat." Oh, no, no, no! It's extremely good fat for you, right? And those and you can and you can actually taste it, right? When you remove all the fat, it's very grainy. Uh, it's not a lot of flavor to it. So people will add different flavors and what have you to kind of mask it. Uh, they tell you, hey, you can stir it into to water and you can because listen, folks, fat floats, right? Uh, you get a frother and it mixes pretty well, but it also brings that almost creamy flavor to it, um, which is very different than being very grainy. Right. Very much, very much. Very different. Can I ask you there a question, Dr. K? So what is the difference with the with the PRP, proline-rich polypeptides? We might lose some people on a big word going, well, <laughs> does that matter to me? What does that speak to the immune system in terms of upregulation, downregulation for those who might need that benefit to go on in their bodies? There's a tremendous amount of research out there on, on PRPs and their ability to modulate, right? Some of us get out of balance and our immune systems are functional way up here where they should be right here, right? Normalized. And it helps, to, it helps to modulate those down. But some of us also walk around with their immune systems way down here, right? Where they can walk into a room and pick up whatever bug was floating around, right? Well, it helps to modulate. What we're trying to do with proline rich polypeptides is put you to a balanced state, right? Balance means... You can defend yourself about the about the things that are trying to get in, defend yourself about the things that are already in, right? Um, but it keeps you to where your body has the ability to offensively and defensively protect itself. 
Awesome. So that tells us that the product that has the higher PRP is definitely going to be more protective over your immune system, give your body what it needs and moving itself into that more balanced um, state. And so as, as we look at that, that's like, that is a huge component of here's why it's important to look at the product and see if it's yellow and dense and clumpy and moldable and taste yummy versus grainy. So the second piece we'll move into from there is um, we're going to look at collection times of milk. So I have seen advertisements of whole food colostrum 24 hour collection 48. I have seen 72 hours in colostrum. So I know I'm simple that this is not colostrum. This is milk. But can you go into it and explain to us why that is the case? Um, absolutely. Back to back to this, right? I didn't make, I didn't write the book, but I work within the guidelines of the book. And it, and it literally says, here's what colostrum is and everything else isn't, right? right. As a matter of fact, uh, let's go into something um, that I, I think matters and that is colostrogenesis. Okay. Tell us about yeah. that. Wait, wait, wait. Tell us. That's a big <laughs> word. <Yeah. laughs> Hold up. Glostrogenesis is the production of colostrum. Okay. Every mammalian mother produces it out there. Um, there's there. And, and, and for the vast majority of mammals, it's very species specific. That colostrum is good for that animal, that mammal. This colostrum is good for that animal, that mammal. Right. Our colostrum is very species specific to us. We know uh, through all the research that it jump starts 40 different processes in that newborn. But we also know now some of those constituents almost are like a time activated. They wait until you're in your 40s and then your 50s and your 60s to kick on, right? That, that maps there, but it waits until a certain time frame to turn on, right? And you start driving a different road. Okay, that's colostrogenesis. Now, lactogenesis or the production of milk. Okay, um, if if and it's always fun for me when I look at what's on the internet. Right, everything must be true on the internet uh, because they say colostrum is from twenty four to seventy two hours. If you look at colostrum production for a human mother, that is true. Okay, it can last that long. But if you look at colostrogenesis for a bovine, and that's what we take, why? Because it is the only colostrum that is identical to ours. But there's a very big difference, right? When we, before we ever see the light of day or take our first breath, mom through the placenta has given us what's called passive transfer. She's given us the immune factors and the growth factors. And as long as you keep us out of the elements, you feed us, you clothe us, we pretty much are on our way to adulthood, right? What about a baby calf? Okay. A baby calf doesn't work that way. They get no passive transfer through the placenta at all, right? When they're dropped or birthed, they have to get at least two quarts and it jump starts their entire system and within a very narrow window of six to maybe eight hours. Okay. Any longer than that. And their stomachs literally close off to those natural growth factors that are in a whole food form. Right. My, my background uh, was HGH before I got back into colostrum from being a kid on a farm. Right. And IGF-1 and growth hormone is what makes up human growth hormone, which we all pretty much heard out there, right? They isolated it from colostrum, synthesized it using DNA recombinant technology with a multi-billion dollar anti-aging industry with a synthetic. The colostrum isn't a synthetic, right? It's an all natural and it doesn't have one or two. However, if you remove the fat or whatever percentage of fat you remove, You've now removed those natural growth factors because they're attached to it. And we'll, we'll see some of that in the, in the charts that the testing was done at Cornell University, right? So why does it, why does that passive transfer matter to you and I? 
What makes that bovine colostrum so much different, although it's identical to human colostrum, is because that jump starting process, it may be, depending on which constituent you look at, it could be anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times more bioactive, right? So I get a lot of questions that people ask me. I can understand where a baby should take colostrum. But what about me? I'm an adult, right? Ask any adult, uh, especially over 30, right? Between 20 and 30, you kind of still walk on water and think you're going to live forever. <laughs> By the time you're 30, things start to not be where they used to be, slowing down a little bit, maybe a little brain fog, little, you, you, you might be, you know, susceptible to the little things flying around out there that we call bugs. Um, and we want to live as long as we can, but with as much youthfulness as we can. Well, that's what colostrum, true colostrum, mm -hmm. brings to the table because it has all your natural growth factors, but it has all the other components to keep it as a whole food, right? Mm -hmm. So why does collection matter? Because if you take it 24 hours, uh, the research shows you've started that transition, okay, to buying it off the shelf called milk. And at 72 hours, you are buying it off the shelf called milk. It's vitamin D, 2%, 1%. Uh, I know for myself, I want the real McCoy. I want the whole food and not a fractional part of it. Yes. Right? And, and there are products on the market today labeled 72-hour colostrum that say oh, that they are collected in that manner. <laughs> It's always funny for me because I, I, throughout the years, I've seen people where they say, I have a, I have a one hour colostrum. Well, there's no science to back that. I have a four hour colostrum. There's no science to actually back that. Right. When you, when you look at, uh, when they, when they say 24 or 48, even 72, uh, colostrum, it's not, it's literally transitional milk. Uh, as a matter of fact, Cornell put out several letters stating that, Hey, this is colostrum. Anything else is transitioning towards that 72 hour mark and you're not going to get all the goodies. We'll, we'll show that here in just a okay. second. Yes. When you, I, when you go ahead. I think we're about ready to move into those charts as we move into them. Um, and we're looking about the relationship of biologically, sorry, active components in bovine colostrum as it changes after the cap. I would like for you also um, kind of, as you move into those charts to look at, um, the fact that um, there are people out there who say, but I, I can't drink milk mm -hmm. and, and explaining to them colostrum is not milk is very important. But then you do have to look at some products. Colostrum is milk for them because they don't know how to take it in a proper manner. So could you answer that as you move into the charts and explain these charts that we have going for us? Absolutely. Let's take a look at the what they call the composition of dried bovine colostrum. Again, this is not me making up these numbers. That Those are the numbers that come from the fundamentals of dairy chemistry, right? And again, they don't change overnight, right? The, the ultimate creator makes it and says, here's what it is, and here's what it's not. So let's take a look at these. These are... This is, this is the composition of dried bovine cloths from hours after birth, at zero hours, okay? You're seeing that it's a very high protein base. You're seeing casein, albumin, fat, and lactose. We didn't put on ash. Ash is, uh, as it goes down this long tube, it starts out as a liquid, and as it goes down this long tube, if you've ever boiled milk and it splashes on the side and it, it kind of cooks it, that's ash, right? But the vast majority goes down this long tube, and at the end of it, it comes out in a powdered state. And that's what we're talking about here with the composition of dried bovine colostrum. And you can see, I gave it the benefit of a doubt. Fundamentals of dairy chemistry says zero to six is period, true whole food colostrum. Anything after that, it's starting that transition. And from this chart, you can actually see that transition, right? Because from zero to eight hours, it's gone protein from 65.10 to 48.9. Big difference. Then, and then if you look at casein and albumin, there's an inverse relationship. As it gets further out from birth, okay, you'll start to see that casein starts to go up, right? Starts very low, starts to go up. Oh, further out you get at 72 hours, 
You're at 22.7% casein. However, albumin starts very, very high, right? And then as you progress timeline, it gets lower. There's an inverse relationship. Then you look at the fat. Now, this one is exceptional, right? Because Fat in milk is not the same as kind of the fat that's found in this first milking or colostrum, right? But fat in, in uh, colostrum, 18.9 at zero hours after birth. Then as this progresses in time, the fat increases, okay? But so does lactose. At zero hours after birth, it's 8.11%. And at eight hours, not a lot of difference, right? Not a lot of time. To, it's jumped to 13.25. At 12 hours, it's 25% lactose. At 72 hours, it just keeps going higher and higher. And, and the goodies that are found in that first milking are sort of washed away. Yeah. That makes perfect right. sense. It also explains why um, so many people that I have communicated with have said, wow, I, I didn't. Um, think that I could tolerate lactose or casein and oh all of a sudden I'm I'm doing okay with this it explains yeah. very much it's not the same composition even the fat as you said is different in whole milk versus colostrum that to me speaks volumes of the importance of that first milking because we are getting a nutritional base. I think you told, it was, I believe it was you that told me once it's like getting a download into your body of a perfect immune system. Well, think about it this way. Our, our bodies are unbelievably designed, right? We have all these processes. We all have all these functions that take place and they're kind of mapped out for us. Right. But sometimes those different pieces that are that are supposed to be there in abundance, like lactase as an example, lactase helps us to digest uh, milk, dairies, and proteins. Well, what's the one time that we all go through something that our hormones just go absolutely crazy, right? Puberty. <laughs> and it's funny when I talk to folks, because yes, there are true dairy allergies, right? That's one in a million people where they carry an EpiPen in their head into the hospital, but that's very far and few between. People kind of take this, that scenario and they go, oh, I have an allergy. Well, do you carry an EpiPen? Well, no. Oh, well, then you have an intolerance. Now, your intolerance can be high, right? But that puberty area throws everything in ski wampus. And the nice thing about colostrum is it actually brings the fuel, right, for your body to use and get you back online, Right. Because puberty kind of throws everything up in the air in the hopes that it all lands in the appropriate mapping, right? Excellent. Um, Excellent. And that's where, that's where some of the studies, some of the testing, right? The, the colostrum comparison that you see on the screen, the AK is me, Anthony Kleinsmith's colostrum powder, right? The ideal colostrum, that was me hand milking a cow on the Cornell farms and having them immediately doing testing, okay? That literally is the ideal of the ideal, right? Well, if you take a look at the, the next one, that, those are comparisons of where they've removed the fat down to 5%. You're now, looking at the folks. competitor? You're looking yep. at that chart with the competitor colostrum yep. product? Okay. Yep. This was all done. All the testing was done uh, at, at Cornell, by the way. Okay. And yeah. the first one, AK, is... Anthony Klein's. Your, that's me. Your colostrum me. powder. The next one is the ideal. And the third is the competitor. That's what you're yes. describing. So the and competitor's out of whack. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, again, they removed all the fat. Well, not they didn't remove all the fat. It's fat's down to about 5%, right? But what you're, what you're looking for is, did you get real colostrum? Or... Did you get a fractionated, manipulated form of it, right? Yeah. And the next slide is where that difference in comparison really proves out. It's not just that, hey, there's some testing that was done and the proline-rich polypeptides were, were definitely out of whack, right? It's also this next slide that shows one of the, one of the questions that I asked 
uh, Dr. Donald Lyon once was, what is the most important, if there was one thing in all of Colossum that you could say, that's it. He would have said, it's your IGF-1. It's insulin-like growth factor one. Okay. And why is that important? Explain to us why the IGF-1 is important. It's one half of what is commonly referred out there as HGH. Okay. And it has a direct impact on pretty much every cell and system in your body. If you have lower amounts, which we peak at 20, or roughly there, and by the time you're 30, whatever your peak was, cut it in half. Now, if you want to live longer with health, if you want to build muscle, if you want to lose weight, you better have this at youthful levels. Okay. So that ideal colostrum again, that's, that's at zero hours. You can see it's very high. Okay. Wow. That is, we, go ahead. When you, when you look at the AK colostrum or Anthony Klein's colostrum, it is almost identical. Okay. You can see from product B, C, and D where they've removed varying amounts of the fat that their IGF-1 levels are extremely low, right? Now, how important is the fat? There's a lot of research, not the marketing mumbo jumbo out there, right? Um, but the research, remember one plus one equals two or three or four, the, fat, the removal of the fat has been shown to remove your growth factor, depending on how much you remove, right? Removal of your growth factors, all natural, removal of prolonged polypeptides, removal of many different factors that are codependent upon that fat, right? Yeah. Now, some people say, oh, we, we need to remove the fat because the fat is where some of these hormones are, right? And I always, I always found that fascinating because they go, you know, oh, it could potentially cause cancer. There are things like Hamlet. Folks, look up, literally, like Shakespeare, Hamlet, and go, go do a search on Hamlet and the benefits, can't, can't mention those, but the benefits that Hamlet brings to the table. Guess what? It's found connected to the fat, right? So the fat, we're leaving it as, number one, a whole, that zero to six hours. Right. I'll give it a, a generous helping of zero to eight hours even is extremely important not to manipulate it. Right. Is, is, is absolutely critical. Um, and, and these folks that, Oh, well, we've removed all this other stuff. And we only have these, and these are the ones that's been going on for, you know, a long, long time. The, the first one that I ran into is transfer factor is the only one that is anything good in, in colostrum. And, and that was literally made a, a mountain out of a molehill research-wise, right? Marketing-wise, hey, marketing, you can, I can sell ice to an Eskimo as long as they're in Arizona, right? <laughs> that is um, awesome. So we have determined that when the fat is removed, when um, you put a colostrum product up beside the real thing, the ideal colostrum, that the benefits are also lowered in the colostrum. So that's our second characteristic that we have scientifically shown that um, that is a fact, that it's lowered. Can we move in and look at the third characteristic of what Innovate does with colostrum in terms of pooling the product and having strategically placed um, farms and cows across the country? Okay. Well, let's think about it in, uh, in the form of what they call antibodies. Okay. These are, these are little protein strands that give us protection. Okay. Constantly, every single day, every moment of your life, you're constantly being bombarded by little bugs out there that want to get in and do damage. Okay. Or you may have some bugs already in running around causing chaos. Right. The antibodies are little things that say, hey, we're your defenders. We're going to take care of those guys and, and we're going to get, get rid of them, right? Well, are the, are the bad guys in California where they really don't get a lot of snow, right? They don't have those hard winters like the Midwest does, right? The Midwest, you got cows that are out there just like we are in the, in the winter saying, oh my gosh, I got a cold. Right. Well, they get sick just like we do all over the all over the United States. But first of all, we take it strictly from the United States. There are five thousand farms that we pull from 
Uh, the average herd size is 500 cows per herd. So there's a lot of bovine out there that if, if you look at cows from California, cows from uh, South Dakota, cows from Colorado, cows from Wisconsin, what you want to do is you want to pull all of that together. Why? Because each section of the country gets exposed to different things, right? And if I'm going to eat a whole food that is designed to bring youthfulness, but also put you into a balanced state health-wise, right? I want to get as broad a paintbrush stroke as I can for whatever those cows have been exposed to. See, you and I have a limited amount of antibodies, Okay. Where bovine, they get exposed to things and they build one and they pass it through the colostrum. Well, that to us is a huge positive because whatever they've been exposed to, they can pass on those benefits to us, right? Kind of a, it's, it's kind of like taking an empty fuel tank and you're filling it up with high octane, but from all over the country, right? So you're bringing things that the cows on one end of the country versus the other end of the country or the middle of the country may not be exposed to, but that we tend to be exposed to, right? Because we do more travel. Well, if you, if you look at that, then you want to have the highest count, if you will, of antibodies that those cows have been exposed to, put them in a pool and then keep them so that they pass on to us. <coughs> All right, that that helps so much in terms of of understanding. To me, that was probably a key component of what was so important to me as I began learning about colostrum, knowing what I needed in a chronically ill body, and that was a just a very key picture for me. Of I definitely want to take this whole food product and see what it does in my system. And I'm sitting here to tell you it works. It worked for me very well. But um, in, um, in closing, I want to look at, you've already alluded well to, um, to some of the details in, in terms of the healthy immune system and the colostrum being the same, um, except more potent, that of a human colostrum. I want to hear your input on um, supplementation. So um, there are so many. You can, you can find a summit, a teaching, a webinar on every supplement product out there almost. And they all promise this, 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 and this. Many of them are synthetic, um, they are fractionated, they're parts of this or parts of that, and the body just does not know how to absorb those things. It doesn't know how to metabolize, how to utilize those things. Can you speak to us on <clears throat> the benefits of colostrum versus this whole shelf that so many people have, I used to have, of supplements that you might have in your home? Let's let's uh, let's pick on a health food store, right? Uh, my background is from the health food store marketplace, right? And and we would go to supply side in Anaheim. We we meet the individuals that sell the raw components that you then put into a formulation and create and say, here you go, right? And one of the questions that when I was back east uh, talking to Dr. Donald Lyon, I said, you know. Dawn, why I take all these different supplements and I, I don't, some I feel, most I don't, so what? He's like, well, first of all, take a look at what colostrum does for the gut. That's where, that's where it begins the process of putting us in this balanced state, right? It, it literally takes and sucks into those different components to, to make our guts flourish, right? to be in a balanced uh, state. I said, okay, so how does that impact all the other supplementation and everything else that's going on out there? Uh, he said, if you have a, a higher functioning gut where you absorb more of the nutrients that you consume, whether it be foods, pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, uh, liquids, whatever the case may be, if you have a higher absorption because of the different 
antibodies that are found in colostrum, the different components that are found in like proline rich polypeptides, massive amounts of how is it good for the, for the gut, right? Well, if you can make that gut function better by giving the body those components that it may be missing and it starts to say, hey, we're functioning at a higher level. That means everything you put into your body is going to be absorbed at a higher level. So what does that mean for your supplementation? You may save yourself a bunch of money because you're actually now getting the bang for your dollar by putting colostrum into that daily regime. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and I, I love that. To me, that speaks volumes to me about what I'm doing, not only for myself, but for my family in our home, it's ages three to ages 100 that we put <laughs> these whole foods in. That I'm somewhat responsible for knowing that we're getting optimal nutrition and we do that alongside healthy eating, but these products have made a huge difference for us. And so in conclusion, um, I'll, I'll just kind of pull it together. We need to be looking for yellow, dense, creamy, delicious whole food colostrum that has nothing but the moisture removed from it. If we want to build our systems to have our immune system ready to face the world that we live in today, it is a toxic world that we live in. And there's not another superfood on the planet that I know of that offers this level of nutritional support because it it supports the organs and systems in the body down to the cellular level. Um, a Novotase colostrum, I've looked. I'm not one to easily be sold on something. I have looked. I have not found another product, anything like it on the market today. And Dr. Kleinsmith, I want to thank you for that, um, for your formulation, for your sticking to um, keeping it the way the master designer made it, because that's how it was made to go in our bodies for the fact that um, that won't change. The way it comes out is the way we need to get it. It was designed once. The fundamentals of dairy chemistry were written on that basis. So I want to thank you for being that person of integrity in business and formulating um, that my family appreciates so very much. And thank you for being with us. Do you have any words in closing that you would like to say? Folks, <clears throat> yes, actually this. I don't make the rules, but I live within them, right? I don't have to worry about the marketing side of it because Dr. Donald Lyon and Dr. Al Fox literally, well, Dr. Al Fox, would, he kind of slapped me upside the head because I was much younger than I am today, right? He would say, forget marketing. Forget it. If you put out a whole product, people will flock to you. And as long as you can get the point across that cow colostrum is bioidentical to what we ourselves use, and our colostrum is species specific, bovine colostrum is not. It is the universal donor, so to speak, right? Yes. But you want to make sure that you get the universal donor, not a fraction of it. Yes. Yes. That, I promise you, we will always provide is the whole food colostrum. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. K. And that's why I'm there. And that's why it's my number one product on the shelf in my cabinet, even in our storage shelf. <laughs> but we appreciate you so much. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me.